So let's talk a little bit about prostate cancer. Um, tell me about what your experience has been um, working with prostate cancer patients and what you found at ASCO on this topic. Absolutely. So we see a lot of patients with prostate cancer here at UIC, and we know that for patients that have homologous recombination repair mismatch deficiencies, we know that those patients can benefit from PARP inhibitors. So as far as prostate cancer, we know that patients with homologous recombination repair deficiency mutations respond well to PARP inhibitors. And so those are approved in the metastatic castrate-resistant prostate cancer. So the point where the prostate cancer is no longer responding to our hormone therapies, that is the setting in which it's approved. We had really interesting data presented at ASCO looking at this in an earlier setting, so in the castrate-sensitive setting, so in the setting where the cancer is still responsive to the hormone agents that we use. And so this trial looked at niraparib, which is a PARP inhibitor with abiraterone. The trial is called the Amplitude Trial, and it was looking at should we be moving those drugs up into an earlier setting. It did meet its radiographic progression-free survival endpoint, But I think one of the main questions is that for patients on the control arm that could potentially benefit from these drugs, only 36% of patients eventually got those drugs because it was an international study. So I think that begs the question of sequencing. Will patients do better if they get these drugs sooner or Will the survival be the same if they still have access to those drugs at the time of progression? So I think that's a really important question because these drugs do come with long-term side effects, including a very small but serious risk of blood cancer disorders such as myelodysplastic syndrome and acute myeloid leukemia. So I think it's important to have more data on overall survival. And it would be great to see more data where patients could all in the control arm get access to these drugs to know the true benefit of moving them earlier in the setting. Mm-hmm. So I think as far as where I stand in clinic today, I you know, PARP inhibitors are still only approved in the castrate resistance setting. We know that these HRR mutations, there are some patients that do better, so they do not all respond equally. So the BRCA1 and 2 are the ones that most have the most efficacious data as far as PARP inhibitors. And so if I have a patient with one of those mutations, I absolutely counsel them on the benefit of PARP inhibitors. The main question remains sequencing. You know, is it better to give chemotherapy first or we have newer radioligand therapies like Pluvicto or the PARP inhibitors? And so, and there are a lot of other mutations that were included in those trials, things like ATM, CDK12, CHECK2, FANCA. There are other mutations that don't respond as well, although the approval is there for those mutations as well. So I think it's important to pay attention to the type of mutation, think about what options we have, think about priorities for the patients. Um, This is an oral agent, which is a benefit. And I'm excited to hear more about this amplitude trial as some of the data matures and we see more about the overall survival as well. 